Hey friend, my name is Bryce Henson, CEO of Fit Body Bootcamp and one of your co-hosts here at the Fit Body Inside Look. Now this show is for our franchise partners and for those who are interested in joining our brand where we execute meaningful interviews with our franchise partners, internal HQ team, coaches and clients to be able to provide you more insight and to get more acquainted with our brand and also to showcase the business opportunity available. Thanks so much and enjoy the episode. Hey friends, welcome back to another amazing episode of the Fit Body Inside Look. I am live here in Richardson Fit Body Boot Camp here in Richardson, Texas, and I'm with my good friend, Mr. Tom Huff. Welcome to the show, my Thanks, brother. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate you coming in today. Absolutely. So we're doing a sponsorship event at, to one of our friends named Amberly Lago here in Dallas over the weekend and wanted to come and connect with you and Katie last night for dinner, grab a session here at your beautiful location here in Richardson, Texas, and uh, after the workout, figured we'd shoot a little content and uh, give our audience a little backstory of who Tom and Katie Huff are. Love it, you know, we love sharing our story, love helping other folks that are thinking about getting into the brand or even just thinking about making a change in their life. So happy to share our story and, and hopefully inspire some lives here today. Love it, that's yeah. what you do, inspire yes. fitness and change lives. Right. So. Um, we'll get the backstory in a second, but I guess, can you tell us a little bit about Richardson? When did you launch, kind of just the overview? Sure thing, launched in 2016. Uh, did not have prior business experience, always wanted to be in fitness because I loved fitness myself, fell in love with it, always wanted to own a business, never had a reason to do it. Um, unfortunately, my brother passed away in 2014. That was really my origin story of what gave me that, that push, that drive, and through a lot of love and support with my wife, got into the brand, opened up our original location in August of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, successful there, went through COVID, realized we could work a lot harder and have a lot more opportunity for our team and our members. And then we are lucky enough to move into this building, which is in the same plaza as my original one. It's about twice the size of our first location. Um, and it's been in, an incredible ride over the last you know, eight years at this point. You know, getting to connect with you, HQ, all the friends we've made, it's just been incredible. Yeah, man. Yeah. And aside from your incredible success, because depending on the metric and all that, top five most successful re revenue generating locations right here in Richardson, for good reason. You're a people's guy. You and uh, Katie have built an incredible community here working out today. The session was fire, Coach Phil. It's just an awesome experience. Success leads clues. So. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And, you know, what we really just led with, what I always led with was, people first, right? Like, how can we have a great experience for people, for people that came in the door? I was in, I loved fitness. I saw a lot of people fail in it, even when I used to go to a big box gym. So how can we just make it easy, accessible, and just be real with people? I think that's that, that might be a setback that some folks have, right? You have that imposter syndrome, or you think that you need to be something that you're not, or be further along than you are, or be the expert, and you just, you just don't know until you're in it. So I just did my best to just keep it real and meet people where they're at. And when you're able to do that and they see that you're also where you're at, you can kind of grow together. So the growth that we've had over the last eight years, it's been for our members, but it's also been for us. Like you're never gonna know everything, be open to learning. And it's okay if you don't know everything. All you need to know is a little bit more than the person that you're teaching. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the movie, um, uh, was it Catch Me If You Can? Me the one with can. Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, yeah. right? Frank about, Abigail was that? Frank Abigail, right? He actually went and taught at a at a college, <laughs> faked being a professor. When they called him and asked him how he did it, he said, "I only had to be one page or one chapter ahead of the class." Uh -huh. Right? And I that always stuck with me when when we opened for business. Like you only need to know a little bit and, and learn as you go. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. Well, uh, let's back this up a little bit and thank you given for the origin story, but you're originally from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, through a series of events, you wind yourself you know, here in, in beautiful Texas. How did all that came to be? What was the challenge like transitioning? I know also too, your brother tragically passed which you were vulnerable open. So we'd love just to uh, hear a little bit about the journey of how you got here before you launched. Sure thing. So from Pennsylvania, uh, born and raised, went to school, went to college, high school, all that good stuff. On the East Coast. East Coast, yeah. met my wife. Girlfriend at the time, we were young. She was in high school. I was just out of high school. We were in our you know, late teens, early 20s. Um, her parents moved to Colorado. When she was in college, they offered her an internship to go work in Colorado. So she went out and worked there for a semester. We had really wanted to move there because we went out and visited a bunch. And they offered her a position when she graduated. We moved to Colorado thinking, this is it. We're going to live here. We love it. Awesome. 
And then we were there for one week. I quit my job. We moved out. My wife, of course, had the job working under their dad. We were going to move in with her parents. We were going to find a place. I was going to find a job. I had interviews lined up. And they came home after one, literally one week of being there. Our moving truck wasn't even there yet with our things. And they said they just told us they're shutting down this facility and giving us jobs in Richardson, Texas at the main facility. Never knew what Richardson, Texas was. Never thought about living in Texas ever. And so... <laughs> Her dad had to move. We thought about staying, but we were so fresh there, didn't really have any roots. And my wife, you know, she got offered to come down as well with a great opportunity. And so we ended up all making our way down here. Yeah. Took, so took, so took, took a detour unplanned. Big time detour. And and the and the lesson that I, I tell folks about that is if we if I wasn't bold enough to leave Pennsylvania, right, like that, all of those things would have never happened. And I could have stayed there and my, my wife, obviously I wouldn't be married, I wouldn't have a son, we wouldn't have the gym. All these things wouldn't have happened mm -hmm. if I wasn't like bold enough to say, I'm gonna move across the country, take this chance, right? Leaving my family, we were dating at the time, you know, we were serious, but we were young, right? Um, to take that chance and just trust and for her family to trust in that, that we were gonna move out there and just kinda see what happened and it all, it all worked out. Life is always gonna work out as it should. Um, so just take those chances. If something's scared, like I was scared. If something scares you, it's usually the right thing to do. Yeah, it's a good sign. Yeah. Keeps you on your toes. Yes. All right, so you get to Richardson. Um, you know, Katie's, uh, her family's job is kind of what put you here. Um, it was your vision initially to launch the gym. Mm -hmm. Now, Katie has then, you know, come full time and you guys have just rocked as a couple, but yeah. it wasn't, it, that wasn't how you launched. So what was that story? Yep. How did, you know, did she support you? Was she uh, hesitant, you know, when you decided to launch the gym? And then how did she end up, you know, being part of your operation? Yeah, sure. So, um, like I said, my brother passed away. I, I was actually working at the same place that my wife and her dad worked. I had this job in security. It was, I was just mind-numbingly bored. I would go to these quarterly meetings with these other security guys and look around the room and be like, is this what I'm going to be doing? And I'm like, I, I'm not meant for this. Like, I, I, I shouldn't be doing this. Talk about imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. It was way bigger then than it was when I opened the gym. Like, I'm like, I should not be doing this. Feeling a fraud every day, right? Dealing with classified documents. Like, I should not be the guy in charge of classified documents, <laughs> right? And so, like, that feel, when my brother died, like, I know we all lost people, but that feeling of, like, life is short, you should do something else. I know we get inspired when, like, someone dies and you think life is short, but, like, it wouldn't go away for me. And so just started researching how do you open a gym? Of course, came across Fit Body Bootcamp videos, looked at some stuff locally here. And the, I always tell people the most nervous part of this whole thing was the day that I put in my name and, and information on the website for an expression of interest and hit submit. Because I'm like, who am I? Mm -hmm. Are they really going to call me? What's going to happen? What's it going to cost? Right? Like, mm -hmm. no idea. But, so put that in. They call me. Um, hey, you know, it's, it's X amount. We want to launch in 90 days, this and that. And I'm like, okay. And of course, everything sounded good. So I'm talking to Katie. Hey, babe, like, I think I want to do this. This is what it's going to cost. We could scrape together. We could make it work. And she was always like, babe, it's, it's, it sounds good. It sounds good. But we have no experience. Like, I believe in you, but like, I, I just don't know. And I was like, yeah. And by the way, set yeah. the tone about how old are you at this moment in time when you're going through this process before you launch? 30. 30, yeah. 31, 32. And she's a couple years younger, so right. she's like 20, Late 29. 20. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, I mean, still in the grand scheme of things. You have some life experience, but still very young in the grand Very young in the game, yeah. right? And so, yeah, they're calling. It's the end of, it's like the fourth quarter of the year. This is from like October-ish to like December. I'm having calls. They're telling me, and basically like, hey, are you ready to go? What do you want to do? And then they called me at the, towards the end of the year and said, hey, by the way, at the beginning of the year, the, the buy-in is going to X. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be able to do that new price. So I was kind of like, I'm out. In the meantime, I went around and worked out at all the local Fit Bodies here. I met the owners. There was a location that he was actually looking for a partner. He wasn't, his business wasn't doing so well. I knew I wasn't going to launch my own. So I was like, hey, what if I keep my job and I go help out here for a while? So we did that. We par partnered up with him and learned so much in eight months. I basically put myself through business college. Mm -hmm. Kept my full-time job, but would go there every evening. We launched challenges, I ran ads, learned how to sell, and saw that in this very low-performing location. The location itself was not good, like, but I made it work. We went from, he had like 29 or 30 members to over 100, all because I came in, ran the ads, ran the challenges, got people results, got people to come to this like really dinky location. 
And so that was that gave me the confidence. You're like getting paid to learn. Yeah, well, actually, we weren't getting paid, but yes, it was it was it, well, you, it paid off. There you right? go. There you go. And so then, fast forward through that first half of that beginning of that year, then because we partnered up on January first. What year was this? Roughly? This was 2016. It's the end of 2015. Okay. Into 2016. Okay. So we partner up. I launch. We're going. And then five six months in, I'm like, I know I can do this. So come August of that year, August 31st, actually the day my brother passed away, I called Fitbody. I had already found the location. I started, like I knew what I needed to do. I called, I, there was a girl, Trish, working at HQ. I said, Trish, this is gonna be the easiest sale of your life. I'm ready to go. What do we need to do? So got the financing together, opened up the location, but back to Katie. So yeah, that first year and a half or so, I'm going, I'm grinding every day. Got a couple part-time coaches, figuring it all out. Um, and what we like realized quickly, and I'm sure this happens to a lot of folks, it's like, you know, she had her job, I, I'm now running a business. So I'm coming home and like puking information on her. Like this which, happened, this, right? Which, by the way, just to set the context, I mean, she's living in a place, uh, and no right, right or wrong, but she's, you know, a teammate and employee, kind of corporate America. Yes. You are an entrepreneur. Right. And, you know, grinding it out. Very different worlds in the different grand of things. And also just personality wise, I'm like, you know, more of a parrot, eagle, like I want to go get the big thing. I got these big ideas. She's very much like, how are we going to do it, right? Yep. Which is why we work so well together now. So it just got to a point after a while where she was coming in and working out and like helping out a bit and like giving advice, but it was just challenging for us to have these separate lives mm -hmm. and then try to come home and have dinner and talk about all the things. And so that was 2016 into 2017. And then it was probably summer-ish of 2017 that she came and started like working, not full time, but working. And then beginning of the following year, she put in her notice at work because she was gonna come full time. And they wanted her to stay for like six months. And we're like, okay, we'll kind of figure it out. And then in that time, we find out we're pregnant. Mm. I'm sleeping on the floor in my office at the old gym because I'm still when working. You find out. I'm in there sleeping, taking a nap. I like kind of wake up. She opened the door, came in. She's like, she like shakes me and she just has the thing, the pregnancy. And I'm like, my eyes are blurred. She just shows it to you. And I'm like, what, 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 right? So it was awesome. <laughs> and, but then it goes to, should she keep her job? Mm -hmm. Health insurance, the pay, right? Cause now it's like, oh, introducing a baby into this whole thing. Totally. Um, luckily we did not do that. She ended up leaving. So then her first while with us, she's pregnant, getting more and more pregnant, you know, has my son at the end of, of 2018, um, which was also really cool because prior to that, we had never trained anyone that was pregnant. We, we didn't have kids. So the big thing we would get from people is, well, you don't have kids. You don't understand how busy I am, this and that. And so that was cool to go through that journey. Now, eight years later, we've helped at least a dozen people work through their pregnancy, mm -hmm. right? Working out through it, and then afterwards coming back, we now understand what it means to have kids, to be busy, yeah, right? Yeah. So we can relate more with people. Um, so that was great. And she's amazing. She's a program manager through her. She has an MBA, very detail-oriented. So she came in, now that we know what EOS is and how to run a business, unknowingly, she came in as the integrator. And, and I was provide, the visionary. To provide some context, yeah. EOS is called Entrepreneur Operating System. It's the framework of the operating system that we um, structure our business, starting with HQ all the way down from a franchise partner's perspective. And there's a role called visionary integrator. And that's the, the perfect split in terms of their, yes. I guess, partnership, if you will. Yeah. And so she came on, put a lot of processes. I didn't have a single SOP written, right? It was all tribal knowledge. And so just started dialing all that stuff in, then attracting the right team members, then going through mistakes together, right? Hiring the wrong people, making wrong decisions together, but learning from it. And it's just so much more powerful when you can learn together. And now it is just, I mean, this is who we are. Yeah. I mean, my son comes in, everybody knows us. It's Tom and Katie. What's it's it like awesome. introducing your son? Ben? Incredible. I mean, like, let's talk about that. Because, Dude. I mean, n number one, first and foremost, there is a problem right now with obesity and not people not in shape. 80% of our uh, population, our country is either obese or 
overweight. And what's even scarier, Tom, is 20% of our child population is. And that's just because children see what their parents yes. do and then replicate that. So yes. the fact that you're bringing a Coach Bennett Dude. involved in here, let's yeah. talk about that. It's awesome. So we were able to bring him in from like the day he was born, just like not in for workouts, but we would go and work out. He'd be there playing. He just basically would treat it like his big playground, right? And so we would come in every Sunday, do family workouts. He would come in. And now that he's a little older, he's five now. He comes in while sessions are going on and stands up front and literally works out up front and watches and gives people high fives. It is, of all the things you would have told me might happen one day, of having members being successful, revenue, whatever, all the things, great team members, all the cool moments, mm -hmm. the events we've got, that has been, to date, the biggest surprise and the most proud I've been. Like, I'm super proud of this place, obviously, but to involve him and just to see that trickle-down effect. And you talked about obesity, which is a huge problem. I think the other big piece of it is just a lack, what I see constantly is a lack of confidence that just spills into people's lives, which is because of obesity and everything else, right? And so, for folks that are watching, like, if you really wanna impact people the thing that you can do the most for them is just be that solid person. So now when folks come in, they see me, my wife, my son, and it is like this unit, unit. right? Like people want to be like that. Yeah, you're, you are the brand. You are like literally living That's it. what you want your community to replicate. Yeah, and, and we've found it throughout the brand, our most successful locations are typically some sort of family partnership, yourself and your wife me and my wife, mm -hmm. CJ and his mom, mm -hmm. uh, Joel and Jared up mm -hmm. in Canada, right? Like we, Trevor Mike and, and MK, Mike and Marlene. Yeah. And so business partnerships aren't always the best idea, but if it's the right partnership, holy smokes, can it be really powerful? Ooh. Not just from the, not just from the business perspective, but then how other people, especially in our business, how people perceive they want their lives to be and want to like look up to people, especially when it comes to fitness. And again, confidence, I think, is the biggest byproduct and the most important attribute to have. And we know that fitness and eating right and having a strong mindset and working together builds that up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's actually talk about, um, especially the business that we're in. You just mentioned that. And I'm curious on how your view on our business has changed and morphed versus when you looked at it, when you put in that expression of interest outside eyes looking in, you clearly had some sort of vision of what that looked like. But if you're anything like me, which you certainly are, um, that vision probably had changed and mor morphed and was a different real time once you got the community off the ground. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about those differences? I can. I always tell a story. So I... Obviously, going in, you know, putting the money out, thinking about business, getting people in the door, revenue, doing challenges, you know, getting people into memberships. How are we going to make this work? All that stuff, right? That's what you. That's what you think about. And yeah. we talk to a lot of owners that are thinking about joining, and that's their main question: When were you profitable? When did you pay back the stuff? What did it cost you to? Right, that makes sense because mm -hmm. that's the risk part of it, right? But there's this woman, Darlene. First challenge I ever ran. We ran a six-week challenge, and I'm happy we got people in the challenge, right? It's the end of the challenge. We're doing our way out, way ins, way outs, right? She steps on the scale. I think she lost 16 pounds or 26 pounds, something with a six, either 16 or 26. She starts crying, dude. And I'm just, I'm so in the mode of just like, let's get her numbers. I, and I, I'm nervous. Like, did these people get results? Right. I know fitness works, but is it really going to work? Right. Because you happen, that happens too. Not everybody that joins your program is going to follow the meal plan and come in for the workouts, right? <laughs> you, you mean think, we're training humans. Right. It's like, I love working out, eating, yeah. right? Why doesn't everybody? And so she starts crying. And I'm like, is something wrong? Like, did she not lose enough weight? Is she upset? Like, what? bro, she's out of her mind excited. Why? She had gone to the doctor before starting. Like, didn't tell me ahead of time. She was going to the doctor. She was on, her A1C was high and almost diabetic, right? And they told her she needed to lose like 20 pounds. And... She didn't, and they, but they also told her, thank goodness for doctors, she was going through menopause. Mm. And she was on, when they get that, that implant to help them with their hormones, and then they retain water and gain weight. Totally normal, you're gonna gain weight, expect it. Mm -hmm. So she didn't, she didn't believe she was gonna be able to get, lose weight. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, she was like, oh my God, like, and it was that moment, like, always sticks with me, because it was like, oh, this is why I'm doing this. Amen. Like, and now here we are eight years later, right? Yeah. I had the pleasure of running two sessions this morning. Yep. We've lost almost 29,000 pounds. We have success stories every single week. We have people do their rank-up speeches after their workouts, after their rank-ups, telling us 
you've changed my life. This has changed my life. This is so big part of it. Thank you so much. Like that never gets old. Yeah. And if I promise you, if you just focus on that, everything will work out. Like the people will sign up, the revenue will come in, your team will believe in it, you'll believe in it. It's just, it just takes time to get there. But focus on the people. That's the so one mistake I've, I made at, at the very beginning was just, but you just don't know until you feel that. Well, and good on you. I mean, it's the spitting image of a very similar type situation. I'm, I'm getting there thinking the X's and O's and making sure our clients are supported. All the things that you were doing, because you care. You want your clients to right. win. When you take a step back and you realize this is something bigger. This community, the coaching, the love, the relationships, and obviously the fitness and fat loss support we provide. I mean, this is life changing. It is. And it doesn't get old. It doesn't. It never gets old. Yeah. And then even having you come in this morning and you sharing words with them, and I always, I always try to tell our members like. Hey guys, like eyeballs are on us, like other locations oh, that yeah. we are when oh, we go to yeah. a conference or when I get a chance to speak and present and stuff like that. So it's just so cool to be able to, you just want to like instill that in everybody and, and let them know that what we're doing here, it might not seem big here, but it's, you're impacting your coworkers. And we always do mindset coaching, right? So how are you showing up for your team, your coworkers, your family, right? What you're doing in these 30 minutes can change everybody around you, right? And have that... Mm-hmm have that impact on them just from showing up. So just give, giving people that confidence that they're doing the right thing. I think a lot of the confidence, lack of confidence also comes from people second guessing themselves, wishing for something else, not knowing what the results should be or where they should be. And we always say remove should, should equals shame. Mm. So just do the thing because you want to, mm-hmm. not because you should or should it and see what happens and let those results just come from the work that you put in and That's also been a big benefit of, or a big reason for our success is instilling the mindset coaching because it helps them, but it helps me, right? I do a mindset coach every, every, every week we do a video and it's like, if I'm teaching this, I better be doing it myself. And you learn the most when you teach. You do. Yes. All right, my friend, we got two minutes. So I want to be respectful. Last two questions, 30,000 foot view. You're looking back at the business. Why have you and Katie been so successful? And then what's been the biggest challenge of the business because I want to be real, raw, and authentic. And let's start challenge first and then look back and then give some final part of wisdoms why you have been built one of our flagship communities here at Fit Body Bootcamp. Yeah, so biggest challenge is also the biggest thing that, that fires you up the most, people. And that includes myself. So biggest challenge that we always see is being a business owner is similar to maybe drinking alcohol or having a lot of money where it can, it can bring out like the best in you, but go on the wrong path, it could bring out the worst in you. So how are you under stress? I used to be very passive aggressive, I wasn't a good leader, but I was smart enough to recognize that and learn through that. So biggest challenge was myself, my self-limiting beliefs, my stuff from childhood, all that good stuff. Um, And then I would say the biggest, um, and then people, like how you, like you you can want something for someone else, but they have to be ready to, to do it. So just be there open and raw and ready for people and, and meet them where they're at. Love it. Yeah. And then, sorry, you said biggest. And then looking back, what would you say, just because success leaves clues, and we talked a little bit about, but why have you and Katie been so successful? Because really the message I want to share is I want to give some insight you know, to our potential audience on what it takes. Yeah. It takes just that constant review of yourself and being honest, having someone that can help you level up, recognize where your shortcomings are, fill up the space with people that are stronger than that, learn from your friends and your mentors and people that have been there. We do calls with folks that that are coming into the brand and I always remind them because sometimes they ask questions a little off the wall. Well, can we do this? Should I do personal training, supplements? Hey, hey, you're joining a franchise because we have a blueprint. Success leaves clues. So I would also say the most, in, this is, I was thinking about this this morning actually before you came in. There was a time where me and my buddy CJ, who's another owner up in South Dakota, we were out at an event at HQ. Mm-hmm. Okay, we went to Mastermind. I won the leadership award. He had just won it the previous one. Mm-hmm. We're walking up the steps in the hotel and I was like, bro, we're so in. And he's like, dude, we're so in. Because it was like, we know you, we know Bedros, right? We know all the people. And I would say in that time and the reason he and I were successful, we were super engaged. Oh, yeah. We became friends. Oh, yeah. We were reaching out to other owners. We were doing our own little calls and like staying engaged. I'd say that the folks that are the least engaged 
in their business, in their fitness, in their life are gonna be the least successful. So we find that sometimes too in our brand where some owners are just feel like they're on an island. So go to the events, make friends, get engaged, ask questions. Don't feel like you're trying to figure everything out on your own. Last thing, I literally just got a text yesterday from Matt up in Providence, mm -hmm. sent me a text. Hey Tom, watch, I did a training last week for the brand on new people coming in and metrics you should look for for people that actually show up. And he texts me, Tom, thank you so much for that call. He goes, I thought I was going crazy, but then you explained the metrics and now I realize I'm crushing it, right? So it's like that perception of, if you're just alone beating yourself up, we're usually gonna think the most negative about mm -hmm. ourselves. Just human nature. But then if you relate to someone like, oh, I'm not alone. Same thing in our workouts when you show up and you're like, this person's like me. Yeah. It just, Makes a lot easier. 40 people just firing all cylinders. I was right? dying this morning, but yeah. like the energy, the connectors, the yeah. engagement. Yeah. So make right. connections. We're in the people business. Um, work on your leadership. You're always going to be your biggest problem. And then as far as teamwork, communication, there's always the problem and it's always the solution. So setting clear expectations. And that's a whole nother chapter we could talk about as far as leading others, but you have to lead yourself first. So are you waking up on time? Are you working out? Are you taking care of your body? Do you have a positive mindset about other people? Because if you don't, people will sniff that out, either subconsciously or, or real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tom Huff, mic drop, my friend. We got to wrap. You've been so gracious with your time. We're in between sessions, and then 8.15 is about to fire out. So I just want to thank you, first and foremost, for being on the show. But more than that, man, it's been a blessing since you've entered my life for the yeah. last one, six-plus years. Um, not only are we business colleagues, we're inspiring fitness, changing lives together, but I consider you a close friend. I'm yeah. so grateful for you and Katie. Dude, same. What a cool journey. If you, if you would have asked me eight years ago, like, what's the best that could happen? I wouldn't say all of this. Like, I'd be like, oh, if we could have some members and like that the experiences we've shared, the stuff we get to do, our growth in our mindset has just been unbelievable. And I tell people all the time and it's like, it's, sometimes it might sound fake, but it's like, no, we just love each other. We love this brand. Because it's just, it's just so cool. And we want that for more people. My man. Awesome. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. You too, pal. All right, friends. I know you got a lot of value from this episode. My only ask is give, give, this, give this a like and share this with someone that needs some inspiration. Aside from that, remember that no one is coming to save you. You must save yourself. And the time is now. Tom, appreciate you, buddy. And friends, we will see you in the next episode.